Hi, I'm Brett Jones, and I'm a professor and motivation scientist at Virginia Tech. This presentation provides an overview of self-theories as they relate to motivation and answers the questions, what are self-theories, and what are their implications for instructors? I'd like to start by asking you to rate three questions from one to six, where one means disagree and six means agree. Please write down your answers so that you remember them. You have a certain amount of intelligence, and you really can't do much to change it. Your intelligence is something about you that you can't change very much. You can learn new things, but you can't really change your basic intelligence. Pause the video if you need more time. Otherwise, continue by averaging your scores to the three items by adding them up and dividing the sum by three. Pause the video until you complete this. If your average was above a three and a half, then you have an entity or fixed view of intelligence. If your average was below a three and a half, then you have a view of intelligence that is called incremental or changeable. Now I will explain what these views of intelligence mean and why they matter for students according to research conducted by Carol Dweck. Self-theories are students' beliefs about the nature of their intelligence. If you have an entity view of intelligence, then you believe that intelligence is fixed. Students with an entity view, who believe they don't have much intelligence, will believe there isn't much they can do about it. If you have an incremental view of intelligence, then you believe that intelligence is changeable. Students with an incremental view, who believe they don't have much intelligence, will believe they can work harder to get more. Researchers have found that students who believe intelligence is changeable pursue learning goals. Students with learning goals want to develop their competence and are more concerned with learning new concepts. In contrast, students who believe intelligence is fixed pursue performance goals. Students with performance goals want to demonstrate their competence and prefer tasks that verify that they are smart and capable. These findings are important to educators because of the effects on students' motivation and achievement. Let's look at how these views of intelligence affect students' goals, which then affect their motivation and achievement. Students who view intelligence as changeable tend to have learning goals, and as a result, have higher motivation and achievement than students who have fixed views of intelligence. Students with fixed views of intelligence tend to have performance goals and lower motivation and achievement. Let's examine a little more closely why researchers have found this to be true. As I just noted, these self-theories predict students' goals in school. Those with performance goals want to look smart, whereas those with learning goals want to learn the material. Self-theories also predict students' beliefs about effort. Students with fixed views of intelligence believe that effort implies a lack of intelligence. They believe that if you have to put forth a lot of effort, then you must not be that intelligent or smart. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to try so hard. Students with changeable views of intelligence aren't as likely to think this way. They believe that effort leads to learning and that they need to put forth effort in order to learn more. Self-theories also predict students' explanations of failure. Students with fixed views believe that failure shows a lack of ability. They reason that if they don't do well, it must be because they don't have the intelligence or natural ability to do well in that area. Students with changeable views of intelligence believe that failure shows a lack of effort or strategy. When they don't do well, they try harder or try to find other strategies they can use to do better. Self-theories also predict students' strategies after a setback. It's easy for students with fixed views to give up. They believe that there's no reason to try harder if they don't have the intelligence or natural ability to succeed. Students with changeable views of intelligence are more likely to persevere and continue trying because they believe that with more effort or better strategies, they can succeed. Now that you have the basics, I'm going to quiz you to see if you understand these concepts. I'm going to give you 10 different situations 
and I want you to determine whether the student believes that intelligence is fixed or changeable. So for each of these first five situations in part one, determine whether the student is likely to have changeable or fixed views of intelligence. Write down your answers as either changeable or fixed. Number one, a student believes that failure means low intelligence. Number two, the student's goal is to look smart, even if he is sacrificing learning. Number three, the student's goal is to learn new things, even if the learning process is hard or risky. Number four, a student believes that failure means low effort or poor strategy. Number five, after something becomes difficult, a student's performance worsens. Pause the video if you need more time to write down your answers. Now let's look at the answers. For number one, the answer is fixed, because a student with an incremental view of intelligence would believe that failure means they didn't try hard enough, didn't use the correct strategies, or simply didn't have the necessary knowledge. Number two is fixed because a student with a changeable view would not sacrifice learning. Instead, he would do what was necessary to learn the material and develop his competence. Number three is changeable because a student with a fixed view of intelligence would not risk learning something hard if she did not believe that she had the intelligence to succeed. Because if she failed, others might think that she's not intelligent. So why take the risk? It's better to play it safe and not try things that might be hard to learn. For number four, students with a changeable view of intelligence believe that if they fail, it means they didn't try hard enough or have the necessary strategies or knowledge to succeed. Number five is fixed because this student would likely stop trying as hard at difficult things. I mean, why would he try if he does not have the natural ability? This lack of effort then leads to poorer performance. Okay, let's try five more to make sure you understand these concepts. Just like before, label each one of these as either changeable or fixed. Number six, if something becomes difficult, a student's strategy is to put more effort into the activity. Number seven, a student believes that needing to put forth a lot of effort indicates low intelligence. Number eight, a student believes that her effort activates and uses her intelligence. Number nine, after something becomes difficult, a student's performance either stays the same or improves. Number 10, if something becomes difficult, a student's strategy is to put less effort into the activity. Okay, let's see how you did. For number six, when something becomes difficult, students with changeable views of intelligence will try harder because they believe that they can succeed with the appropriate effort and strategies. In number seven, this is consistent with a fixed view because students with a changeable view understand that effort is needed to learn more. This is exactly the point of number eight, which is why this student has a changeable view of intelligence. Effort is needed to activate and use her intelligence. For number nine, it is changeable because the difficulty of the activity would not affect the student's performance or might actually improve it because he tries harder. In comparison, a student with a fixed view of intelligence would be likely to put forth less effort into difficult activities. This is why the answer to number 10 is fixed. I hope that you understand these concepts well at this point. Now let's use these concepts to answer the question, what are the implications of self-theories for instructors? Well, what can teachers do to affect students' beliefs about intelligence? For one thing, they can focus their feedback on effort and not on ability, such as intelligence or smartness. They should say to students, you must have worked hard, or you did a good job drawing, instead of, you must be smart, or you are a good drawer. This might seem simple, but I can tell you from experience that it's hard to do. Often in classes, or even with my kids, I find myself saying, you're good at that, 
It's easy to say when someone is good at something. I usually catch myself and then follow it by saying, You really worked hard at that, in a tone that communicates my belief that working hard was a good thing. Another thing teachers can do to affect students' beliefs about intelligence is to criticize the process, not the person, by saying, Maybe you could think of another way to do it, instead of, I'm very disappointed in you. You don't want to make it sound like they failed because of something innate that is part of them and cannot be changed. This would imply that intelligence is fixed. Instead, you want to focus on the process they use, because that is changeable, and that they could use a different process next time and succeed. So you might offer them other strategies they could use to study or learn the material. Another thing teachers can do is to explicitly talk about ability as being gained through effort as opposed to something that one is born with. For example, at an appropriate time during the instruction, a teacher could say, geniuses such as Euclid were dedicated to math, not that their natural talent led them to brilliance. Of course, you have to be honest and accurate about such statements, but this is not hard to do if you look up some famous quotations, such as the one by Thomas Edison, where he said that, Genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Quotes such as this convey the idea that even very famous people believe that their success was due to their great efforts. Teachers can also affect students' beliefs about intelligence by evaluating students using standards that compare them to their prior performance, not to other students. Finally, Researchers have found that teachers can affect students' beliefs about intelligence by citing scientific findings related to brain research. In some studies, researchers have shown students how intelligence is increased when neurons and dendrites form new neural connections. By conveying these ideas through readings or videos, they have convinced students that they can grow their brains. These types of interventions have led to students changing their views of intelligence from more fixed views to more incremental views. If you are familiar with attribution theory, you've probably noticed that these strategies related to self-theories build on the basic ideas provided in attribution theory. Now I want to place these strategies related to self-theories within the bigger picture of motivating strategies that can be used by instructors to motivate students. The music model of academic motivation provides key motivation principles for instructors to consider when designing instruction. A more complete explanation of the music model is provided elsewhere, such as in Jones 2009 and at the motivatingstudents.info website. But here I want to briefly explain this model and how the instructional strategies related to self-theories fit into the music model instructional strategies. The music model states that instructors need to ensure that students believe that they have some control over some aspect of their learning, understand why the content is useful, believe that they can succeed if they put forth the effort, are interested in what they're supposed to be learning, and believe that the instructor cares about whether they meet the course objectives. These five key principles can be remembered by using the mnemonic music. The ideas related to self-theories of intelligence are most directly related to the success component of the music model, which states that students need to believe that they can succeed if they put forth the effort. The self-theories of intelligence ideas are useful because they help answer the question, what can instructors do to help foster these success beliefs? Instructors can help students believe that intelligence is changeable using the instructional implications I just presented. There are other theories that also help explain ways a teacher can foster students' success beliefs, but clearly the implications from self-theories are important to students' motivation. The purpose of this presentation was to provide an overview of self-theories of intelligence as they relate to motivation. More explanation of this theory can be found in the references cited here. I have links to other information and videos on my website at www motivatingstudents.info. Feel free to contact me by email at brettjones at vt.edu.